for that. Gina, thanks so much for taking the time to come over here and, and talk to me. Um, has this is this your first women's symposium here? With no, I've been to quite a few over the last probably decade. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm um, a big fan of, of the center. So fantastic. yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, are there any highlights from today's presentations that you're going to take back? With well, you? I'm a fan of Claudia Black, so I grew she up. She just spoke. Yes. Yeah, she just spoke. <laughs> She's just getting on the elevator. She's got to go. And. Um, I'm a fan of Claudia, so I grew up as a baby intern in the early 80s, and that's when Claudia was really coming out, along with John Bradshaw and Pia Melody, a lot of the forerunners of trauma and tying trauma with addiction. Mm -hmm. So that was really important for me for that to be highlighted. Mm -hmm. So I know that the Betty Ford Center is at the center of the growing need to treat women yes. and to do it effectively and to wrap services around them. So I like too that you were promoting as well, integrating trauma along with what is the traditional treatment or yes. has become traditional treatment Absolutely. for drug and alcohol Absolutely. counseling issues. So that was great. It's always great to see her. Absolutely. Yeah, she's Thank an awesome you. speaker. Yeah. And I understand that your your specialty is addiction and trauma. Yes. Can you speak a little bit about yes. that? Yes. Well, my experience has been working with clients both inpatient and outpatient. Mm -hmm. I've always had my hands in both. And I grew to know that there was not addiction without trauma. And so when I would ask my clients, have you ever experienced any trauma, they couldn't always specifically give me an example. They didn't always understand what trauma meant. Sure. What I love today was... Claudia gave a definition which Pia Melody often uses too, is trauma is anything less than nurturing. And then so that includes neglect and abandonment. Well, with a lot of addicts too, that's in their history, especially if they come from addicted families. But not only that, I say to my clients, if you've never experienced trauma, addiction is your trauma. So you now have a trauma to speak of. Sure. And what I know is when they don't address that, they tend to get into chronic relapse because the emotional issues that are underlying and driving that, you know, driving the addiction right. doesn't always get addressed, especially in early stages of recovery, because we're just looking at stabilizing. Right. You know, so I've been questioned a lot of times about why do you introduce trauma and doing trauma history and trauma timelines so early in somebody's recovery? I said, because it might have been missed. Right. And they might have, you know, recidivism rates where they've been to eight or nine treatment facilities and no one's ever really dealt with that piece and one of the things Claudia also said was trauma repetition right. which that's part of it is here you have your addict who now gets is in repetitive abusive relationships sure. that are traumatic that are right. constantly triggering the need to go back out and use and numb and all those areas that you know she was talking about never addressed. it's never addressed so I mean I'm an advocate for it uh, I push for it I speak about it all the time but more than that is to educate everyone else you know not just lay people but people in our own industry to educate that is a huge piece that can't be missed that history is so critical to how they're coping to how they operate to what their relationship is with the addiction to begin with you know is it a coping skill is it a way to survive is it a way Claudia also said that like is it like a lover or a friend sure. there's an attachment that goes along with it, not just how we want to look at it. Oh, you just don't have the strength, or you're just impulsive, or yeah, no. yeah, it's right. like a familiarity. So, uh, to me, it's super important. I can't talk about it enough to look at those core issues and to begin to deal with the trauma. And you have to have trauma sensitive or trauma informed clinicians. So that right. means either the work they've done the work on themselves. I'm a huge advocate for therapists and therapy and <laughs> therapists taking care of themselves right. but also exploring the places I call them blind spots mm -hmm. if I has a blind spot as a clinician in an area that I haven't dealt with in my own trauma mm -hmm. when it walks in the room I'm not going to recognize sure. it you right. know Makes and sense. part of that is to say you know I say this all the time and my clients will tell you but I'll <laughs> say the reason you deal with trauma is so you can recognize it walking in the door the way to break that bond and that repetition is to recognize the symptoms of what am I attracting. I had a client two nights ago sitting in my office. She'll laugh if she figures out this is her, but, um, you know, young, beautiful woman, you know, early 30s, relationship trauma where at a very young age she was sexually abused 
and she repeated that and it was her first intimate relationship with a male was a sexually abusive relationship so she keeps repeating relationships where the men cheat on her or they abandon her and she was in a panic sitting in my office I think I have a nice guy and the funniest thing was it was almost as traumatic for her to come to a realization that she might have chosen different and that she was breaking that pattern she has a long history of cross addiction, so shopping addiction and sure. food addiction and, you know, recovering from anorexia, bulimia. And so this was her one area that she just couldn't break, the code, you know. So just watching her, having begun to identify, she had never really put together from that first incident, even though she's been through therapy. She goes, I know I've talked about this but nobody emphasized to me that I might re be repeating something because it's what I learned in my first relationship. So yeah. it, it was a simple adjustment sure. to make with her, but for her it was huge, you know, where nice guy probably would have got blown off it, you know, <laughs> the second date, you yeah. know, yeah. had she not had in her mind, I need to do this different because what I'm drawn to is usually a traumatic. Once so, you're aware, you can deal with it. Yeah, it was. she was like, this is so weird. It feels so awkward, like I'm doing something against my grain. And I said, it's like learning a new dance. Right. You know, it's, it's unfamiliar in your body and you're not used to it. But I go, you're moving in that right direction. Right. So, you know, kind of keep going. That's kind fantastic. of keep going with that, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much well, for sitting welcome. here and sharing with me. That's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. You bet.